Seven Luminaries. I'm Julie and welcome to another episode of Booksmart. Today's book has become one of my favorites, A Keeper. It's Anne Lamont's Bird by Bird, Some Instructions on Writing and Life. Through the years, I've come across Anne Lamont's name several times. I haven't read anything by her. It seems she writes fiction or religious stuff. Last spring, I came across several must-read book lists, many of which listed Bird by Bird. When I checked online if my used bookstore carried it, sure enough, they did, but I forgot to buy it on two occasions. It was still there all those months later. Part of the reason I didn't remember to buy it, other than my age, is because they didn't set it with the other memoirs or biographies or even in the general nonfiction. It was in the reference section within the shelf of writing materials. Based on the U sticker on the spine, I'm guessing it was a required college textbook. The second I read the back, I knew I would love Lamont's writing style. Here's what it says, which then also reveals why the title is Bird by Bird. 30 years ago, my older brother, who was 10 years old at the time, was trying to get a report on birds written that he'd had three months to write. It was due the next day. We were out at our family cabin in Bolinas, and it was at that kitchen table close to tears, surrounded by binder paper and pencils and unopened books on birds, immobilized by the hugeness of the task ahead. Then my father sat down beside him, put his arm around my brother's shoulder, and said, Bird by bird, buddy. Just take it bird by bird. I loved it. I pulled out my kitty cat tabs and my highlighter. And as you can see from all my little tabbies up here, there is a myriad of useful, applicable information in this book and not just about writing. I have to admit that I was mad as I read this book. It was published in 1994. I took my creative writing class in college in 1996. The textbook for that class was this piece of crap, dry book that was a boring how-to on fictional writing. It was not the least bit inspiring whatsoever. Shouldn't that be the first step in any creative writing class, whether it's a college level course or a high school one? Shouldn't the instructor want her students to get excited about writing and then give students writing tips only after they have that inspiration, the desire to write? So I was mad as I read Bird by Bird, wondering how my writing life may have been different had I read this when I was 19 years old. I may have decided to put my energy into writing and not just for college assignments, but actually pursue a writing career as opposed to teaching. What was my instructor thinking or the college forcing us to buy probably a $60 book that held little inspiration? That's how inspiring I found Bird by Bird. It's one of those books that you go back through after you've read it to read all the parts you highlighted. Those parts that will inspire you on a day-to-day -day basis until they become a part of you. That's how good I think the book is. Part of what makes Bird by Bird so great and easy to read is Lamont's writing style. She's funny and self-deprecating and realistic and wise. As an author and a teacher, she knows what she is talking about and she does so in an entertaining and inspiring way. But she does all of this on the basis of reality. She doesn't sugarcoat what it's like to get published and she doesn't think everyone write something that is publishable, yet she never discourages anyone from writing. I couldn't help but to compare Bird by Bird to Stephen King's On Writing, which I did a book smart episode on months ago, which was what I used as a textbook when I taught at a community college. King's memoir was essentially divided into two parts. The first half was his own memoir about his writing career, which developed more of his childhood writing than his addicted days as a best-selling author. The second half is how to write. What Lamont has done is commingle the two. As she's weaving in these writing instructions, she's also providing her own anecdotes, and she does so seamlessly. And when she does give you writerly advice, it's not highbrow or critical, like King can be when he talks about adverbs and the use of a thesaurus. While I adored King's book, I didn't find it inspiring. There were some golden nuggets in on writing, no question about it, especially the part about the rabbit, but I never felt like it was something to reread to gain inspiration for my own life, not really even my writing life. But Anne Lamont's Bird by Bird is a book that everyone should read, writer or not. To discuss the book, I'm going to divide it up into three parts, for the writers, for the readers, and for the living. So let's start with the writers. In Bird by Bird, you will find useful advice about character development and plot, but that's not what I'm going to focus on here. I want to focus on how she captures that essence of writing why it matters to the one writing. Many authors don't want to admit such facets of the writing life, instead focusing on the art of, or the commitment or the dedication that writing takes. Lamont covers all those aspects, but also that reason why. And let me tell you what she says about it. I just try to warn people who hope to get published that publication is not all that it is cracked up to be. 
but writing is. Writing has so much to give, so much to teach, so many surprises. That thing you had to force yourself to do, the actual act of writing, turns out to be the best part. It's like discovering that while you thought you needed the tea ceremony for the caffeine, what you really needed was the tea ceremony. The act of writing turns out to be its own reward. And writers may even go from wanting to have written something to just wanting to be writing, wanting to be working on something. Like they'd want to be playing the piano or tennis because writing brings with it so much joy, so much challenge. It is work and play together. Writing is a joy in and of itself. Lamont also shows what writing does for those of us who don't like to be the center of attention, yet writing is how we make our presence noticed. So let me read you what she says about us introverts. Writing can be a pretty desperate endeavor because it is about some of our deepest needs, our need to be visible, to be heard, our need to make sense of our lives, to wake up and grow and belong. It is no wonder if we sometimes tend to take ourselves perhaps a bit too seriously. So through all my kitty cats, and I've got a lot of them in here, I'm nodding my head saying, yes, that's what it is. As writers, we are artists. She says, this is what separates artists from ordinary people. The belief deep in our hearts that if we build our castles well enough, somehow the ocean won't wash them away. I think this is a wonderful kind of person to be. Isn't that lovely? I feel that Lamont is giving me every reason to write. She paints the writer as important, not just the act of writing to the one writing, but that it serves a bigger life purpose. Let me read you this little snippet. I couldn't help but read so many of these because there's just so many delightful parts. Don't underestimate this gift of finding a place in the writing world. If you really work at describing creatively on paper the truth as you understand it, as you have experienced it, with the people or material who are in you, who are asking that you help them get written, you will come to a secret feeling of honor. Being a writer is part of a noble tradition. No matter what happens in terms of fame and fortune, dedication to writing is a marching step forward from where you were before. When you didn't care about reaching out to the world, when you weren't hoping to contribute, when you were just standing there doing some job into which you had fallen. She reminds us that we have to have care if we want to be good writers. She says, you do not have to have a complicated moral philosophy, but a writer always tries, I think, to be a part of the solution, to understand a little about life and to pass this on. Think about that for a second. It's incredibly powerful. Because if writers can do that, then imagine what happens when we read, which is a nice segue into what Bird by Bird will do if you are a reader. Lamont states this, for some of us, good books and beautiful writings are the ultimate solace, even more comforting than exquisite food. I can assume if you're watching Booksmart, you are a reader or at least interested in the topic of the book I'm talking about. Those of us who are avid readers do so for a reason. I love watching television, not randomly watching whatever is on, but having specific shows to watch and to look forward to watching those shows. I don't read much fiction, instead watching my shows. Yet reading memoirs and true crime books and historical books and other nonfiction books, I gained so much knowledge from the world through reading. Reading gives us new perspectives and makes us take notice. R Lamont wrote this in regards to reading. And you can probably relate. Books help us understand who we are and how we are to behave. And quality of attention. We may notice amazing details during the course of a day, but we rarely let ourselves stop and really pay attention. An author makes you notice, makes you pay attention. And this is a great gift. Reading is an incredibly powerful activity, an incredibly productive way to spend your free time. And she talks about this. But so many of us can be soothed by writing. Think of how many times you have opened a book, read one line and said, yes, and I want to give people that feeling too, of connection, communion. You wouldn't be a writer if reading hadn't enriched your soul more than other pursuits. 
This sophisticated innocence is a gift. It is yours to give away. We are wired as humans to be open to the world instead of enclosed in a fortified defensive mentality. What you're giving can do is to help your readers be braver, be better than they are, be open to the world again. Haven't we all felt that way after reading a really good book? And then she connects all of this back to the writer. And she says, Becoming a writer can also profoundly change your life as a reader. One reads with a deeper appreciation and concentration, knowing now how hard writing is, especially how hard it is to make it look effortless. You begin to read with a writer's eyes. And then, when we put all this reading and writing together, Lamont bestows upon us great gifts with how to live our lives. And this is what is applicable to anyone. So let me read to you some of her words of wisdom. I honestly think in order to be a writer, you have to learn to be reverent. If not, why are you writing? Why are you here? Let's think of reverence as awe, as presence in and openness to the world. Think of those times when you've read prose or poetry that is presented in such a way that you have a fleeting sense of being startled by its beauty or insight, by a glimpse into someone's soul. All of a sudden, everything seems to fit together or at least to have some meaning for a moment. This is our goal as writers, I think, to help others have this sense of, please forgive me, wonder, of seeing things anew, things that can catch us off guard, that break in our small bordered worlds. I think this is how we are supposed to be in the world, present and in awe. Mostly things are not that way, that simple and pure with so much focus given to each syllable of life as life sees itself. But that kind of attention is the prize. To be engrossed by something outside ourselves is a powerful antidote for the rational mind, the mind that so frequently has its head up its own ass. Seeing things in such a narrow and darkly narcissistic way that it presents a colorectal theology, offering hope to no one. Wow, I mean, that's just beautiful how she puts all that together. She also writes about perfectionism, how it kills our creative spirit. She also discusses our time here on this earth. It's finite, plain and simple. Lamont combines the people in our lives with our reading and states this. I just have so many little parts that I couldn't decide what to read. And so this is what she says about those people that may or may not be as supportive as we wish they were. And I don't think you have that kind of time either. I don't think you have time to waste not writing because you are afraid you won't be good at it. And I don't think you have time to waste on someone who does not respond to you with kindness and respect. You don't want to spend your time around people who make you hold your breath. You can't fill up when you're holding your breath. And writing is about filling up, filling up when you are empty, letting images and ideas and smells run down like water. Just as writing is also about dealing with the emptiness. The emptiness destroys enough writers without the help of some friend or spouse. And because we're all dying, some of us more quickly than others, we should always remember this. I remind myself of this when I cannot get any work done, to live as if I am dying, because the truth is we are all terminal on this bus. To live as if we are dying gives us a chance to experience some real presence. Time is so full for people who are dying in a conscious way, full in the way that life is for children. They spend big round hours. So instead of staring miserably at the computer screen, trying to will my way into having a breakthrough, I say to myself, okay, hmm, let's see, dying tomorrow. What should I do today? We do need reminders and tricks as we live our one and only life. Even though Lamont focuses on fictional writing, she prompts such fictional writing with what we have lived through our own experiences. She focuses a brief chapter on letters. If you're suffering from writer's block, she suggests you write a letter to a friend or family member that you tell them about your life or one aspect of it, something you don't want to go into your grave leaving without someone else knowing that you want to share with them. I don't know if people know just how powerful this is, not just if you're a writer or not, but if you are a writer, remember, this is how Laura Ingalls Wilder started her novel writing career. Sure, Wilder wrote for the local newspaper for years, but she sat down at her desk and wrote Pioneer Girl originally for her daughter Rose. 
Then she had Rose shop it around to publishing houses. When that failed, Rose suggested to her mother to revise Pioneer Girl, which turned into those Little House books. And if the Little House books didn't exist, I would have never had the joy of watching Little House on the Prairie. And finally, I would like to focus on Lamont's school lunches chapter, a powerful activity she has her classes complete. According to Lamont, writing and school lunches are similar in that, and I quote, the longings and dynamics and anxieties are so similar. As you read this short chapter, you will reminisce about your own school lunches, how that said so much about you and your family, the pecking order in society, and create a wonderful snapshot of life, a showing versus telling moment, which is what good writers should do. Thanks to that school lunches chapter, I wrote a delightful chapter for another memoir I'm writing. Lamont's Bird by Bird is worth your time and money. It's one of those little wise books to hold on to and then maybe pass it on once you've aged out of it and give it to someone else, not just to a writer or a reader, but someone you care about. I'm going to end this episode with a magnificent passage from Lamont as part of her last chapter, which she calls The Last Class. So why does our writing matter again, they ask. Because of the spirit, I say. Because of the heart. Writing and reading decrease our sense of isolation. They deepen and widen and expand our sense of self. They feed the soul. When writers make us shake our heads with the exactness of their prose and their truths and even make us laugh about ourselves or our life, our buoyancy is restored. We are given a shot at dancing with, or at least clapping along with, the absurdity of life instead of being squashed by it over and over again. It's like singing on a boat during a terrible storm at sea. You can't stop the raging storm, but singing can change the hearts and spirits of the people who are together on that ship. Thanks for watching. As always, my goal at Booksmart is to get a little bit smarter, one book at a time. <laughs>